this side of the border and Andhra Pradesh villages on the other side of the border. So that is how we started this initiative. I am really, really happy today to stand in front of you, launch a world-class uh, ambulance for our area. And as Dr. Cherian has pointed out, we are also in partnership with Lifeline Hospitals, uh, putting a emergency care trauma center at Sri City. I also request Dr. Cherian to consider to build a multi-specialty hospital at Sri City whenever his first project completes and that area requires a lot of these facilities and we have the infrastructure, we have 50 plus companies at Sri City. In fact, since I was coming here, I saw a lot of uh, metro rail construction. The metro rail uh, coaches are going to be made at Sri City. Uh, some of the antennas for Nokia phones are getting made. We have 50 plus world class companies have already chosen Sri City. There will be a huge expat population. So that will be a good place to have a, and India requires many more hospitals like Lifeline Hospitals. And there is a lot of potential for, to, for India to get into medical tourism, I think, which Dr. Cherian is driving that initiative. As our chief guest pointed out, Dr. Cherian has done a lot of first things in this field. And I derive a lot of inspiration from him. At this age, uh, he is more committed than me to my project. In other words, uh, he told me he does the surgery in the morning, and every day he comes to the project. Our project is only 10 kilometers from there. And if I go twice a week, I feel that I'm doing a great service to the company or something, that feeling, you know. I mean, because traffic, two hours, all this frustration. Sir, I think I always talk to my team about your energy levels whenever our people, there are some executives whom we recruited in Chennai, they bargain in the process saying, can I go to the site only twice a week or three days a week? So in those situations, I quote Dr. Cherian as the thing, inspiration, saying that I'm, I, I tell them that I feel ashamed and I feel that executives like 40, 45, when they say I can go only two days a week. So I quote Dr. Cherian as an example, how he does the surgeries and still goes and spends time. So hopefully together we can transform this area of the border area. It, it will benefit a lot of villages both on Tamil Nadu side and the Andhra side and I think we are with you sir for whatever medical uh, initiatives you take. We conducted some medical camps and I was sitting here when as the Joint Commissioner of Police was walking in I was even thinking one of the things that is missing in the stretch is there is no ambulance for uh, emergency accidents on the highway. So probably I think working with all of the agencies probably we don't mind um, call it as a uh, donating or whatever, I don't know what is the word, to highway authorities because we are the frequent users of that highway. If something happens, uh, recently one of my friend got an, an accident and they said had he been brought into hospital uh, 10 minutes before he would have been alive, you know, since there was no ambulance. In fact, Andhra side also there was a problem, this 108, which I think is there in Tamil Nadu cells, they were on strike, they couldn't get the ambulance and we lost a life. So I don't know, so I think with working with Lifeline Hospitals, probably we should also think of safety on the highway because we see a lot of accidents on that highway. With this, I once again thank you, sir, Dr. Cherian and other dignitaries on the dais for giving me this opportunity. And together, I think uh, we will make India a better country for the people here and also a lot of experts who are coming to this country. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I invite Dr. Amalur Pavanadhan, convener, cadaver transplant Tamil Nadu, to highlight the significance of organ donation and the unique status of Tamil Nadu in India. Respected Dr. Cherian, most respected Vice Chancellor, respected Joint Commissioner of Police, Mr. Ravindra Sena Reddy, Dr. Christopher, who is my junior in my college, Guests, dignitaries, friends, members of medical fraternity, a very warm good morning to all of you. Now, I was requested by Priya that I must speak about the unique status of Tamil Nadu. 
The unique status of Tamil Nadu is because people like Dr. Cheryan and Dr. Mailwahan and Nadarajan live in Chennai. This is the unique status of Tamil Nadu. I am not praising them, but I must elaborate further. Dr. Cheryan is the pioneer of cardiac transplant. Everyone knows that it needs no introduction. What many people do not know is that there is no other dedicated systematic cardiac transplantation center in the whole country. I mean in the whole country there is only one a dedicated systematic sustained cardiac transplantation program. And Dr. K. M. Cherian started it, nurtured it and is running it. That is the uniqueness of Tamil Nadu. But for Dr. K. M. Cherian we would have wasted many hearts. It's not that sir you have utilized we have wasted, otherwise we would have wasted them. So you have given life to so many people and you continue to give life to so many people. Many people know Dr. Mailwahan and Nadrajan only as a Vice Chancellor now. If you go to university you must see the standards he has set in medical education. You must see for yourself. Uh, very, very uncompromising high standards in medical education today. Anybody should be proud to be a professor under Dr. MGR Medical University today. It, it gives me great happiness that I am one of the faculties. But not many know the other aspect of Dr. Mailwagan and Natarajan. Like Dr. K. M. Chirin is for heart transplant. Dr. Mailwagan and Natarajan started the bone transplant when nobody thought of it. Fifteen years, sir? Was it fifteen years ago? It was about 15 years ago. I am a personal witness to what happened in the dingy corridors of GH and in the theatres of GH. The theatres of GH are not the number one in the world. But it is where Dr. Mailwahan and Nadrajan pioneered bone transplants. Before him, all the patients with bone tumours ended up with amputation. He was the one who thought that those patients must be given a full functional limb and he innovated this art of bone transplant. When he started, there was no other center in Tamil Nadu, no other center in the whole country thinking in preserving limbs. He was a pioneer in this. I want you to give a big hand to him because this is not known to many people. Today, today, 15 states in this country follow this model. And he was the architect of that model. And he is telling me, in another 10 years, even the rest of the states will follow suit and there won't be a single amputation of limbs because of tumours. I am very glad to hear that, sir, because I am also a limb surgeon. And I know what people go through when they are amputated. I am very grateful to you, sir. The third unique feature of Tamil Nadu is a very, very people-friendly police. Mr. Shankar, I must tell that Tamil Nadu is perhaps the only state where a busy traffic on a New Year Eve in 100 feet road and in Mount Road was stopped in the evening of 7 o'clock. You know how busy 7 o'clock would be in Mount Road, how busy 7 o'clock would be in 100 feet road. The whole stretch of traffic was stopped for 10 minutes on a New Year Eve just to bring one heart to Dr. K. M. Cherian and the patient was alive. That was the signal contribution of police department to medical fraternity. Even today in cadaver donation, cadaver transplantation, lot of small, small issues are there which need the help of police. Every time we get, we encounter such problems. We get nothing but very, very positive response from the highest police officers. I must record this. That even at the odd hours I have rung up to the police officers, they will be in the midst of some serious meeting, but they will always come back to me and always try to help a suffering victim. This sort of uh, very people-friendly police, people police force is one of the very crucial aspects in the success of cadaver transplant program. Having said that, I will rapidly run through few slides, not many. I won't take your time much longer. So, organ donation is about a person who pledges during his lifetime or after death 
organs that can be used. So India is in need of lot of organs, about 75,000 kidneys, about 50,000 livers. I do not know the exact number of requirement of heart. It must be in thousands, sir. It must be in thousands. But our, our cadaver donation is only in hundreds. So who can be a donor? A living person can be a donor. A diseased person can be a donor. Living related is there. Living unrelated transplant is there. And cadaver donation is the main one here. What organs can be donated? About 21 organs can be donated. Mainly we do kidneys, liver, heart, heart and lung. We hope to proceed to bone transplants and we hope to proceed to taking all the tissues and ligaments and soft tissues and homographs, etc. Who can donate? No set age limit exists for organ donation. Anybody can donate. At the time of brain death, the potential donor's organs are evaluated and only if they are fit, they are taken. Many times I have offered organs to Dr. Cherian, they will come and inspect and if the organs are not fit, they will not compromise. They will reject that organ. They will never, never compromise. There were several instances they have rejected the heart. Therefore, people of any age wishing to become organ and tissue donors should sign a donor card and inform the family that they wish to donate. Today, a lot of people come and ask us for about uh, organ donation cards and uh, it's, it's a welcome change in Tamil Nadu that a lot of people are willing to donate what they do not want. And, uh, Brain death. Brain death is a legal determination of death and it involves the complete and irreversible loss of brain function including brain stem. Many people have this confusion between coma and brain death. Many people think that we may be removing organs from people who may be potentially savable. Absolutely wrong. Brain death is a very, very distinct clinical entity. It is certified not by one doctor but it is certified by a team of four doctors. And the four doctors have to run through 13 tests individually. And these 13 tests again have to be repeated after a gap of six hours. That means 26 tests are done. And even if one test is doubtful, we won't proceed with brain death certification. So it is so stringent, so very stringent that literally, literally mistakes are impossible. So people can have confidence when the doctor says that a particular person is brain dead and then they must come forward to donate organs because organs are taken and distributed in a very, very transparent way in Tamil Nadu. They reach the sickest person who needs them. Who gets the donated organs? Person suffering from end stage organ failure. It may be a heart failure, it may be a liver failure, it may be a kidney failure, it may be a heart and lung failure. Organs donated do not belong to any hospital. Just because a person dies in X hospital, the hospital cannot claim those organs belonging to that hospital. The organs belong to the society and the society has to see that the organs reach the most deserving people. All over the world it's the government that decide the basic principles. In Tamil Nadu also it is so. The Tamil Nadu government has a cadaver transplant program and uh, the cadaver transplant program distributes the organs in a very, very transparent way. As I said, the unique status of Tamil Nadu is presence of Dr. K. M. Cherian and Dr. Mailwahan and Nadrajan and therefore Tamil Nadu ranks number one in India in cadaver transplantation. We have crossed around 200 donors. We are performing at around 15 times the national average. The rest of the states are nowhere near Tamil Nadu. 47 approved transplant hospitals are in the state. I don't think any other state has so many approved transplant hospitals, of which 36 hospitals are registered for cadaver transplant. The reasons for our success is simple. We scrupulously follow the Act of 1994 and the rules of 2008. We have very relevant government orders issued by state government. And all the orders are very, very vibrant because they are all written with the, with the active help of experts. They are not written by just government bureaucrats. The experts crafted all the laws of the government and the continuous cooperation and cooperation from NGOs and a tremendous teamwork. Again, Tamil Nadu has got a very, very good infrastructure for transplantation. We have been doing transplantation for the past 25 years. We have leading experts in transplantation in Tamil Nadu today. And Hidendran, the boy whose heart and all the organs were donated, the heart was harvested by Dr. K. M. Cherian and the harvesting took place in this hospital. 
Hitendran effect was principal in kick-starting a massive cadaver transplant program in Tamil Nadu. Then we have a tradition of charity and benevolence among people who are willing to give what other people require and what they themselves do not require. The, there is absolute transparency in the program. Anybody can go into the computer and see the wait list. Anybody can see how organs are distributed. Our program is so transparent that people are willing to repose faith in our program, trust in our program, and that, that makes more people come forward and donate because they know that the organs are reaching in a very altruistic manner. They are reaching in a very transparent manner. There are no economic um, money transactions, etc., absolutely. So, people have developed that faith because of the transparency that we have in our program. That trust gives us more organs and more people are willing to live because of that. And all the GOs, as I said, are, were framed by experts in this field. That is the uniqueness in Tamil Nadu. We had, till today, 206 donors and we had around 1,187 total organ donations, which is number one in the country again. So, to conclude, I must say what Winston Churchill said. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The importance of our traffic police in making a successful organ donation program is highlighted by the fact that the heart of an infant from Bangalore could be transported from Chennai Airport to Frontier Lifeline in 9 minutes 37 seconds and every second counts for the success of the procedure. I now invite Mr. K. Shankar, Joint Commissioner of Police, Chennai, to say a few words on the role of police in facilitating organ transport. Respected Dr. Cherian, distinguished medical luminaries on the dais and uh, dear